I'm Carol Davis. I'm a physical therapist. Well, you asked me a question about what I want to share most with Pilates instructors. And I was thinking about it last night, and I wrote some things down, and I'd like to tell you what I wrote down. Um, all of us, no matter who we are, who are working with patients, want very much to make a difference. Want our patients to feel better and to feel more healthy. And when we go to school, we're all, um, uh, and or go through the training, we're all uh, focused on our technique and uh, how we can manipulate people in a way when they're on the equipment, for example, so that then they'll heal. But the fact is that what's most important is that how we are with our clients is just as important as what we do. And the mastery of the technique is necessary, but it's not sufficient to what it is that we're trying to accomplish with people. It seems to me that healing is grounded in the energetic connection that we make with others. And the vehicle for that energetic connection includes attention to movement imbalances and the knowledge of how to bring them back into balance in a way that's compatible with the patient's understanding. And that's, that's really mastery. The patient's understanding and feel, attention to movement imbalances, and the intention to be present in a way that resonates with the energy of the person that we're working with. Now on the exterior, if somebody came up and watched you while you were doing that, what they would notice is that you're paying close attention and that you're moving in a way and you're touching in a way and move your foot here and try this. It looks like match, pace, and lead on the exterior. But on the interior, the feel of that is what might be a little bit more hard to discern. Although many of us now can discern it. We walk up and we watch and think, ooh, there's, there's a special connection there. It's an ease and a flow and a resonance. And that's exactly what it is. It's an energetic wave resonance of us with our patients. So that at the end, what we feel is, oh, that was a special connection. Now that's more difficult to teach. That's something that has to come from a kind of a maturation within. But you can practice it, and it can be mentored in people, and I think that's what I love so much about Polestar, that so many of the teachers and the models and the mentors have this, and they embody this. And so if students are tuned into that, they see that, they can feel that. And if they start to copy that, they might not understand exactly what they're doing at first, but eventually that inner kind of connection with patients becomes so important that it almost becomes impossible to chit chat during a session. It becomes impossible not to be tuned in to what's going on, on both the exterior and the interior levels. That's the piece that I really want to share with the Pilates instructors. So recognize that balance within and that's cellular homeostasis and self-regulation. That's what makes us at the top of the food chain. That's not the fact that we can oppose our thumb and our little finger, but the fact that we have a consciousness and that we're aware of that consciousness. And thought and consciousness has everything to do with this cellular homeostasis and self-regulation. And balance without, morphologically, what we really focus on when we're teaching technique, functionally on the mat or on the reformer, is facilitated by fascia that's free of restrictions. Now, fascial restrictions are part of living in gravity. We can't get, we can't avoid our fascia coming together and, and binding down, especially if we don't drink enough water. Half our weight in ounces of water a day, minimum, to keep our fascia flowing and our cells communicating because that fascia is the copper wire conduction system, James Oshman says, of being able f to get the subatomic particles to move through our body so that cells can communicate with one another. This is Candace Pert's work, Molecules of Emotion. Fascial restrictions, particularly ones that are deep within our core, 
hold back movement internally, cellular communication, externally, movement that's balanced, and prevent movement flowing with ease. Now these restrictions can be released in several ways, certainly by way of a talented Pilates instructor. But the deeply held restrictions often respond best to sustained release, or the Barnes method, myofascial release, manual therapy that softens that ground substance and helps lengthen the fascia and release stuck emotions that are stuck in our consciousness that's embedded deep within this fascia from decades old trauma, just from living on the planet. And then Pilates and breath help maintain that lengthened fascia. So the two working together, it really can't be separated in my mind. Fascial restrictions need to be released and then sustained with yoga, with breath, with Pilates, with intentioned movement and, and balance. And that's my message for Pilates instructors, especially those who are uh, of the pole star uh, lineage. And then I've been thinking about your question about what is it that I want to leave behind when I leave the planet? You know, I graduated from my training in physical therapy in 1969. I mean, I am so old. I'm so old. But I've learned so many things that now, at this point in my life, I'm able to practice in a way that being old is wonderful, being old is rich. Um, it means not having to struggle through mistaken ideas and misconceptions. But in my heart of hearts, I am a physical therapist. I'm a myofascial release physical therapist who appreciates and works with Pilates instructors at Polestar Pilates in Miami. But and I am a, a, a client of wonderful Pilates instructors, and so I recognize the benefits of Pilates, especially having healed from a trimalleolar right ankle fracture last year. What I want to leave behind is that excellence in physical therapy includes appreciation for the larger picture. We, as physical therapists, need to be holistic in our understanding of people and illness in the larger cultures of the world. And I say cultures very advisedly. I'm, I'm not just thinking about ethnography. I'm thinking about the communities that we belong to, that we identify with, the belief systems that we have that are ingrained in our bodies that have everything to do with how then we respond to someone trying to help us heal. We are more, as physical therapists, more than just diagnosticians and exercise experts. We have an obligation to help each other heal. And we do that, yes, with our knowledge and skill. We put a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of money into getting our degrees and our knowledge. But most of all, we help people heal with our care and our concern and our energetic connection with our patients. We have an obligation to read and understand the effects of subtle energy on our cellular processes, and then to use that knowledge to help the body-mind heal itself in all that we do. For example, as physical therapists, we can't stop with just reading Newtonian physics. We have to understand the, the impact of the environment on genetic expression. This is not mumbo jumbo. This is not pseudoscience. This is the new science that photons and electrons have an effect on our genetic expression. And that how we are with our patients impacts their feelings of hope and possibility. And that has a direct expression on their genes. Our patients deserve to be met where they are. Not where we are, where they are. We have an obligation to meet them where they are. And when we meet them from a position of knowledge and skill and compassion and an appreciation of the effects of subtle energy, 
that facilitates the flow of mind and body, we are most able then to truly serve. And as a result, we get something that we can get no other way, and that is a feeling of deep gratitude for the opportunity to make this kind of difference in the world with people. That goes beyond anything that many of us ever learned in school. It comes with reading, it comes with being open to this new science of subtle energy, it comes with expanding our understanding of laser, of pulsed electromagnetic stimulation, that we already appreciate of ultrasound, that we already appreciate. But asking the questions of why is it that ultrasound is so hard to dose? Why is it that laser is so hard to dose? Is it because everybody's energy needs to be matched in a certain way to get the maximum cellular benefit? Is it because that we're, we're sounding or lasering the wrong tissue? Those are the questions that physical therapists need to be asking. And it's all related to this whole idea of the role of subtle energy in how we do what we do with patients and in an appreciation and a humility for who we are as applied scientists in the world. We do that with care and with compassion, with enthusiasm, with curiosity, and every day, every day then is a joy and an adventure. And people thank us and we thank our patients because there's just nothing quite like being a physical therapist in today's science and in today's world.